Missing from the list of familiar names that have prompted a movement to condemn police violence and remind America that black lives matter is the name of Miriam Carey. We don't know why she drove from her home in Connecticut to Washington, D.C. We don't know what prompted her to make that U-turn at the White House checkpoint. In fact, we were wrong even in what we thought we knew about her actions on that day. Police initially reported that she tried to breach two Washington landmarks and that the incident was not an accident. But according to reports in both the Washington Post and Mother Jones, none of that turned out to be true. What is true is that Miriam Carey's life mattered. We know that she was a mother to a beloved daughter. She had family, friends, and co-workers at the dental practice where she was a longtime valued employee. We know the Secret Service and Capitol Police fired a total of 26 bullets trying to stop her. We know that after being struck by five of those bullets, Miriam Carey was unarmed when she died. But what we don't know, and what her family is hoping to find out, is why stopping her alleged reckless driving required the use of deadly force. Joining me now is Miriam's sister, Valerie Carey, and Eric Sanders, an attorney representing the Carey family. So, Valerie, I want to start with you both because you are family, but also because you are former NYPD. With what you have learned about the actions of the Secret Service, the actions of the Capitol Police, at least what you know at this point, mm -hmm. What is kind of your professional judgment around, even beyond the, the personal loss here? Well, we know little. It would be uh, great if we can hear the police radio transmissions, mm -hmm. which would tell a bigger story, but those haven't been made available to us or the public. A uh, videotape that was obviously taken at the scene. Um, professionally, there was no need for deadly physical force. Uh, my sister was unarmed. My sister was a law-abiding citizen. She had no criminal record, and she was not committing any crimes. And she was shot multiple times to her back. This happened in October of 2013. Mm -hmm. Since then, the deaths of Michael Brown and of others have led to a public conversation about this use of deadly force and the, the value of black lives, even when they are unarmed. Right. Ms. Carey was not part of that conversation for the most part. I, and I suspect it is because many of us thought, well, this was tragic, but, you know, D.C. and the White House and the Capitol. And so if you act that way, you're prob that's probably going to be what happens. But then these recent incidents of breach of exactly that space, of the White House perimeter, and then even just very recently, of the Secret Service themselves right. breaching that space, has forced us all to go back and reconsider having removed Miriam Carey from our conversation around this. Well, well, we knew from the beginning it was a bad shooting. I mean, but we know that from our law enforcement training. People like to believe that Washington, D.C. is some magical place, but the United States Constitution applies there, too. And matter of fact, there's Secret Service Director, the outgoing, the woman, I, I, her name escapes me at the moment, so she admitted as much, that we have constitutional limitations. And that applies to them, it applies to the U.S. Capitol Police, and just because you think, you suspect there may be a crime committee, you still have to follow these protocols before you use force. And all we want is full disclosure. We're not asking to litigate this uh, case in the media. Mm -hmm. We want full disclosure. It's like Eric Holder said with Ferguson, Obama said with Ferguson, release all the records. Mm -hmm. we, we, we're sure that the facts will back up what we were saying from the beginning. This was an excessive use of force and completely unnecessarily unlawful. Marie, <clears throat> nothing can bring back your sister. Nothing can bring back the, the mother of your niece. Mm -hmm. What does justice look like for your family right now? Justice looks like transparency. Mm -hmm. uh, those that were involved to be held accountable. We still don't know the names of the officers involved. Mm -hmm. And there's this off-duty You officer. as a family don't know no. the names of the people no. who fired the 26 bullets into no. the car that killed your sister no. and potentially endangered your niece. Correct. Correct. Well, they endangered her. Yes. No doubt about you, you, it. You don't know their names. No, we do not. So justice would be those that were involved to be held accountable. Um, the initial officer that I feel was the catalyst to this, which is the off-duty officer right. who still remains unnamed. There were two uniform officers on the scene at the time. I don't see why he felt compelled to take what he thought was police action when mm -hmm. there were two uniform officers 
on the scene. Right, and so this is that officer. That's um, I think it's part of how the the language got. Um, we started hearing this language about putting that she that she had rammed a gate because right. he actually moves his kind of mobile bike gate in front of the car right. after she's already in that right. space. That's and she a, was actually trying to leave. Right, mm -hmm. that's a police barrier. And like I said from the beginning, the conversation should have focused on that cooler. And mm -hmm. now we see the cooler may actually mean something, mm -hmm. but they probably didn't do anything about it to investigate it. As you see, unfortunately, this agency has a chronic drinking problem. It's been reported over and over again. Obama's team, the teams that went down in Colombia and Venezuela, they're being sent back because they're drinking too much alcohol. Right, so and so, and, right, and so we, since we don't know, awesome. right, then, then the question becomes, why, why don't we, why why don't don't we, we know? know? Or maybe they do know, we just don't know. They just didn't disclose it. I, I'm, I'm also, obviously, part of the pain here is that in the fog of how this was initially reported, as though it were an attempted terrorist um, attack, there is a moment in the Congress where there are applause for the Secret Service officers. A standing ovation. Oh, yeah. That lasted for about two minutes, applauding the death of an unarmed U.S. citizen who was law-abiding and didn't commit any crimes. And, and to this day, there hasn't been an apology, any acknowledgement, anything. Is that apology from the lawmakers, the elected officials, part of what you seek in this question? Part of it, yes. And like I said from the beginning, I think part of the problem with the Mary Carey shooting, as well as all these other shootings, like I said before in other interviews, the U.S. Patriot Act is a source of a lot of this stuff because we're on the guise of terrorism. Mm -hmm. So we believe that we're stopping terror. I don't know mm -hmm. what terror we're stopping. Mm -hmm. We haven't stopped anything. All we, we've done is increase unarmed police shootings all over the United States. Yeah. And that's not what we expect in the United States here as citizens. I am chilled every time I have to... Um, say that her 13-month-old was in the back of the car. My daughter is 13 months right now. And right. Um, you're right, there is no, there is no justice, no applauding um, killing an unarmed woman with her child in the car. Right. Thank you to Valerie Carey and to Eric Sanders. I promise we will keep our eye on this story. Yeah.